How you doing? This is Willie P. Richardson, and I want to thank you for buying my very first recording. I also want to thank all the peoples I fooled with my crazy phone calls. They were nice enough to let me use their voices on this recording. Of course, there were some peoples I fooled who can't take a joke and didn't want me to use their voices. That's probably because they sounded so stupid when I was fooling them. Some people might also think that this recording is what they nowadays call politically incorrect. Well, if that's your problem, you don't need to listen to no more. Just turn your machine off and keep that old frown on your ugly face. I hope all the rest of y'all think it's funny as everybody else who heard it do. If you got any ideas for some more funny phone pranks for me, I sure appreciate it if you'd call my record company. Their phone number's on the package on this recording. I sure do thank you. Again, this is Willie P. Richardson. Enjoy my record. Nurse Paula. Oh uh, yes, ma'am. Is your name Paula? Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Uh, this is Willie Richardson mm -hmm. out here on Third Street, and uh, my little uh, daughter was up there a few weeks ago and had a baby, mm -hmm. and uh. It's been about three weeks ago, and I believe they said you might have helped take care of or something or other up there. And what I was wondering about was, I'm sitting out here and saying, my daughter ain't here, I wouldn't be calling if she's around here, you understand? Uh, we we colored people, you know, we're black people. Mm -hmm. And this baby here we got, it looks like a Mexican. And what I'm thinking has happened up there is somebody, you know, I didn't, I didn't say nothing about it at the time, but I believe somebody done switched these babies around. Now, we got the wrong one out here, and what I was wondering could I do is uh, come come back up there this evening and bring this baby, and you call whoever have our baby and uh, bring it back down there so we could get the right one, you know. Okay. Now, what was your name, Richardson? Uh-huh, Willie Richardson. Okay. Um, well, Mr. Richardson, um, when your daughter had her baby and she was ready to go home, mm -hmm. well, actually, when the baby is born we put identical matching bracelets on the baby uh -huh. and on the mother uh -huh. okay now when they go home your daughter looked at the bracelet on her arm and looked at the number and she looked at the number on the baby's bracelet and then she yeah, but see, they were the but, same but, but see she can't read so, you know, that's what had me. I'm real worried about this and everything called. Okay, uh, now, there's a lot of times that black babies look like Mexican babies. Uh-huh. There, there really is. But, um... Well, no, see here. Uh, just just I, a second, I, sir. I, I have to go on a transport. One moment. Mm-hmm. Glenda, may I help you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can I bring this baby back up there? You know, I'm, what I'm worried about, I, I ain't even going to be able to teach, teach it how to speak English. He doesn't think he can teach it how to speak English. Well, hello. Okay, Mr. Victor. Yes. How you doing today? Okay. Good. Uh, I don't think I ever met you before. A cousin of mine eating there sometime. Okay. And really like y'all food and everything down there. All right. And I was going to ask you a question. You may think this sounds crazy, oh, right. but uh, uh. Uh, there's an old woman stay over here close to me. She got these cats and she got a couple of little old dogs and everything. It's uh -huh. always, they won't get out of my yard or nothing, you know. Uh -huh. And they're running me crazy over here. Hmm. And I was wondering, I know y'all don't do it down there, but I was wondering, is there any way that I could, you know, I think about killing them <laughs> and making me some hot tamales out of them. Oh, no. <laughs> could you grind them up, you know, like grind them up like regular meat and you think they make a pretty good hot tamale? Oh, no, I don't think so. Uh-huh. I don't think we'd be able to do that. No, I'm not talking about you doing them. Uh -huh. But, I mean, if I did it myself, uh -huh. you think they'd turn out pretty good? I don't know. I don't know about that. One of them cats are pretty big. I don't think we could do that, though. Who? I. Oh, I know you can't. I'm talking about you think I could do it. Sure, if they running you crazy. They really running me crazy. I didn't know. I called a dog pound, you know, and they won't come out here and do nothing about it. And he cast, cast all over everywhere. But uh, yeah. I know y'all got good tamales out there. How do you, like, you just grind that meat up? No, we, it's, it's just boiling, you know. We strip it like, you know, like the chicken strips and stuff like that. Uh huh. Yeah. And then, them, and then you make the uh, outside. What is that like? Corn meal. That corn. Uh, that that. 
corn, yeah, corn, what do you call it? Corn meal? Masa. Masa, yeah, masa, masa, masa. I seen that in the store. Well, uh, like, you know, I don't, I'm probably going to have a bunch of company and everything feed these to them. I don't want them to know there's no cats and dogs. Is there some kind of spice or something I could put in there to kind of, you know, give it a good flavor? <laughs> well, yeah, you can put some salsa in there, you know. Some what? Salsa that, that, uh, what do you call it, chile? Yeah. Well, do you mix, like, you know, like some kind of chili powder? When y'all make tamales out there, you, you just mix chili powder in with it? It's something like that chili powder, but it's that fresh chili. Yeah. That, that, and uh, chef food, you know, uh -huh. garlic, stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you think that might make some pretty good ones? Oh, shoot, you know, but I wouldn't need them, though. You wouldn't? Yeah, uh, no, no, you know. <laughs> I don't know, no, knowing that what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about, I'm going to have all these people over here, and they'd be drinking wine, they ain't going to know no different. <laughs> so you think they'd be all right with them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I don't <laughs> do it, though. Oh, I know you would. I ain't talking about you. I don't mind doing it. Till one time, I made some out. I, I barbecued some armadillo. Uh -huh. And uh, and uh, uh, some coons, and uh, had a bunch of company over, and they thought it was poor, you know. Yeah. Show a lot cheaper that way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, look, if you talking about you boil that meat, yeah. do I just like if I just was to uh, you know, clean these things like you know, cut the entrails out and all that, and throw them off in a pot? Can you boil all that hair and everything off of them, or you reckon I had to like skin them? Yeah, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. really don't. Well, if I was to, like, after I get them all skinned down and the meatball and everything, if I was to just drive out there, I ain't talking about bringing them in or nothing, but if I pull up out there, could you come out there and kind of show me how to do this? No, I, I don't want to get involved with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I ain't going to get involved with that. Yes. You know. Uh-huh. Well, y'all sure got some good food out there. He yeah. brought me a plate home the other day. Yeah? Yeah. Well... Stop by again, you know. I will, but I'll let you know how that turned out. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks All right. for your help. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Is this Perkins' office? Oh, yes, ma'am. Is this uh, Justice of the Peace office? Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering if you might help me with something. Is, is uh, Justice of the Peace in right now? No, he's not here. Yeah, ma'am. Do you know when he might be back? No. No. Well, it's a sort of emergency. I don't know if this would be necessary. I don't know too much about the law or nothing. Uh -huh. But I stay out here on this road between Nacogdoches and uh, Woden out there. Uh -huh. And uh, some fella come through here on a motorcycle a while ago, about four or five of them. Mm -hmm. And they ran into one of my cows out here oh, and killed it. Well, you and, need to call the sheriff's department. Yeah, remember, I just need to, let me ask you one thing. Uh -huh. don't, don't hang up on me. I okay. need some help. I'm yeah. nervous about this. And, it, and, the, and it, the, the motorcycle hit the side of one of my big old cows out here, uh -huh. and it killed the cow. And uh -huh. I thought it had done killed one of them motorcycle riders, but he got up and cranked his motorcycle, and they all took off and everything. I got one of their license plate number. Uh -huh. And uh, what I was wondering, I got insurance on these cows out here, uh -huh. and I wondered, do I need to get to Justice of Peace to come out here and pronounce this cow dead like he do a person, you know, before I can get my insurance money on it? Um, I don't believe so, but I think you're going to need a report from the sheriff's office. Yes, ma'am. And, and if you need the judge out there, they'll call him. Yes, ma'am. Well, do he, have you ever pronounced some kind of animal dead that you know of? Uh, not that I know of, no. Yeah. What they usually say when they do that? They just look at it and say, yeah, yeah he did or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. He, he do? Yeah, it's not any, they don't make any formal statement or anything. Yes, ma'am. I can't get in trouble for nothing like this myself. I mean, if my cow was out in the well, road, what I'm think, worried about. I think you're going to need to call the sheriff's department. Well, I'll tell you. let them know, because you're going to have to, if you're going to file it on your insurance, you're going to have to have a report for your insurance company. Yes, ma'am. And you, the, if, if the motorcycle rider wants to file charges on you for the cow being out there, he probably could do that. So I think I would call him just to be on the safe side. Well, let me ask you this. I've been drinking a little bit this evening, uh -huh. and I'm afraid for the, you know, the sheriff's department to come out here. They blah blah get me. Well, you know what I'm talking about? You're, yeah. you're talking about, you think I ought to wait a while kind of for, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I, I, this got me sober right quick, but I just, I know I smell like beer. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you they won't, but I, I don't think they will as long as you're acting cooperative and all that kind of stuff. Well, my old wife about half crazy. She crying and raising cane around here now yeah. about that cow. That was yeah. one of her favorite cows, oh, you know. God. Well, let me ask you this. 
we gonna butcher this cow and go ahead and butcher to see any of y'all down there need any meat Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I bet you better put it in your freezer or your wife will have a fit. Well, I, you know, I can't. She said she didn't want to eat none of it. It was oh. her favorite one. It was sort of like a pet, you know. Yeah, bless her heart. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, y'all, don't y'all sometime have them law enforcement barbecues and things? Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't well, mind just giving it to them. Uh, well, you? let me have a judge give you a call. Why don't okay. I do that? Okay. Okay, what's uh, that number? My name is Willie. Richardson, R I C H A R D F O N. Okay. And my number is 232-7704. Yes, ma'am. But y'all, you don't think you want to buy none of this meat? I mean, it ain't been dead here but about 20, 30 minutes. It's all right. Ain't no flies or nothing got on it yet. No, I, I just butchered some myself, so yes, I don't really need any. Yes, ma'am. Well, I sure appreciate your help. Okay. Uh, I voted for that judge out there. You know, I tried to help him all I could. Now, yeah. I'm on. I tell you what, I'm gonna wait about two or three hours. I'm on. I done dragged the cow off in the ditch out here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna wait before I call the, the law down here because I've been, as I said, I've been drinking a little bit this evening, and okay. and I, you know, and I just sure don't want to get taken downtown uh, for jail when it was, really? you know, that man's fault really to hit yeah. my cow. My old cow wasn't bothering nobody. Sometimes they just eat grass out by the road, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll tell him to give you a call. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all right. Well, what's your name? Juanita. Juanita. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I seen you one down down, down here to, ain't y'all office right there kind of close to the post office? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, ma'am. You, you're a pretty lady. Well, thank hey, you. You, you got a husband, anything? Oh, yeah. You oh, do? Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. You don't, you ain't interested to have no boyfriend? Oh, heavens no. You're not? <laughs> okay, then. Well, I always just wants to check, you know okay. what I mean? All right. All right, honey. All right. Bye-bye. Well, Red Pointers. Yes, ma'am. This is a Reverend Willie Richardson. And I trades with y'all up there. And I got a suit out to clean us. Uh, I believe it was yesterday afternoon. Ain't that your mama works up there with you? Yes, sir. I believe she the one wait on me. Uh, kind of a short lady. Uh-huh. And I got home with them. And there was a lady's pair of drawers in the pocket. And my wife is going crazy out here. And I need to get some of y'all to tell her that they wasn't in there. To, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You better find out who draw in there. Uh, y'all, could you, is there any way you could help me? Uh, I have no idea about it. This is the first I've heard of any women's panties anywhere. Yes, ma'am. Well, ma'am, my, my, my hush now, hush, honey. You uh, find out who draw. I mean, we don't do underclothes. No, but I'm saying they were in the coat pocket when I when I came home. And I ain't been fooling with no women's, and I'm having a hard time telling her that I'm a preacher. I'm a respected man around preacher here. Preacher don't mean that there are drawers in the pocket of your mm -mm. clothes. Hush, now, honey, I'm trying to tell this lady something. Uh, could you could you tell her that they wasn't in, the, in their coat when I brought them down there? But I don't know anything about your clothes, Mr. Robertson. I really don't. Uh, uh... Well, I've been trading with y'all a long time. This woman, I believe she's going to leave me over this end. I've been mad to her for 30 something years. Somebody done picking up your clothes up there. Uh, Willie Robertson? Uh huh. Willie Richardson. Richard. Uh huh. Uh, would you give me your phone number, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's uh, area code 409 56, uh, 5697. Oh, oh, two. Oh, oh, two. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll call Mother and have her call you. Okay, then. All righty. Bye-bye. about five, ten minutes. All right, I sure appreciate it, because I'm going to really be in trouble if you don't. All righty. Bus station. Yes, sir. How you doing today? I'm doing fine. Yes, sir. My sister wants to go to Fort Worth, and uh, I was wondering how much it costs and what time do the next bus leave to go up there. 
Well, she just missed the 1240 bus. It, it just pulled out. So the next one's going to be going out at about 5.15 this afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, what time uh, do it get up there? Well, it, it's, it's got to go to Shreveport and then Dallas. Shreveport? Yeah, and then it's got to go to Fort Worth. Uh, go to Shreveport first? Yes, sir, Shreveport, and then Dallas, then Fort Worth. Yes, yeah, so about how long do it take to get up there? I'll tell you what. Hang on for a second. Uh, let me check first. All right, sir. Uh-huh. Well, we're going to have a pretty long layover in Dallas. Uh, uh, she'll be in uh, Dallas for about four hours, and then she'll get to Fort Worth about uh, 6.10 this morning. Lord have mercy. It'll take about 12 hours? Uh, uh, yes, sir, it does. i tell you what. Let, let me see if we can do any better going through Houston and Dallas, and let's see if that does any better. Hang on for a second. All right, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, if she could make the, the 110 bus um, today... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, 1 o'clock this afternoon, one ten this afternoon? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, yes, sir. Uh, before I bring her down there, I need to ask you something. She is real large. I mean, she have got real uh -huh. big. She probably weigh, I meant she go somewhere close to 500 pounds. And, uh, yes, sir, she's a pretty large girl. And I was wondering if I was to bring her down there, y'all would have somebody down there. Might have to be one person and <laughs> kind of get down on the ground. I will not be laughing about my sister, but she is huge now. Somebody might have to get down on the ground and, and shove on her, you know, or try to get up through that dough. And then maybe somebody get up in the bus and y'all I might even have to go far as tie some around and one of you get up in there and try, try to drag off up in there, yes, sir? Well, uh, you know, I, I couldn't guarantee it, man. She's, she's going to have to change buses in Houston and in Dallas, and that's two changes for her. Uh, yes, sir. You don't think it'll hardly be nobody down there could help her, though? Well, the thing about it is that, you know, she has a couple of close connections. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, uh, she's going to get into Houston at about 3.55. She's going to leave at 5 o'clock. Let me see. Yeah, 5 o'clock. And that gives her, you know, about an hour and five minutes to get changed. Yes, well, that might be enough time for her to get a big old self out there and get around the bus station. I don't know. Let me ask you this. Uh, how wide is them seats they got on there? <laughs> well, uh, they're, they're, they're fairly wide. You know, they're, they're basically built for a normal person size, though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, you know if they got some kind of uh, divider or something like that in between them that could be taken out or something? Uh, I don't know. Some buses might and some don't. I can't really tell you which ones do and don't. Yes, sir. Well, uh, you think the one, you don't know if the one's uh, going, going on down there would? Well, you know, I mean, she wouldn't have any problem using the double seat, you know, between here and Houston. Uh-huh. But uh, between Houston and Dallas, uh, boy, I mean, between Dallas and Fort Worth, you know, those buses are pretty loaded, and I, I don't know. Yes, I understand. Uh, she might not be able to use two seats. Uh, yes. Uh, can you think anything else? Well, you, you know, we've got the seats in the back of the bus. It goes across the back. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, but, you know, one of the problems is she's going to have to go all the way down that aisle. <laughs> yes, I don't, believe, I don't believe she can squeeze down through there. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. Uh, if she... If 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 she have to take up two seats, would I have to buy two tickets for? Well, you probably would. You know, it's going to be required of you. You know, if, if she's going to take up two seats, she's probably going to have to pay for two. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, there was something else I was going to ask you for. Uh, she got a rooster. Would it be all right if she bring it on the bus? A rooster? <laughs> yes, sir. I, no, sir. Uh, no pets allowed on the bus at all. Uh -huh. No animals, no birds. Yes, sir. Well... Uh, what about could she bring some fried chicken oh, on them? Oh, yeah, yeah. She can bring something to eat. That's not a problem. Ain't no problem with that. Uh, no, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Lord have mercy. Huh? This is something else, ain't it? Uh, how wide that restroom, though? It's, it, it, it's not very wide. If she weighs 500 pounds, you know, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't think she's going to be able to get through it. Yes, sir. Well, that is something. Uh, this is this is really something. I feel so sorry for her. She's so large and everything and got diabetes and everything. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask you one other thing. If, you know, if we couldn't if we couldn't get up through the door of the bus and she wouldn't fit in on them seats, any way y'all could haul her down out up underneath the bus where they carry that luggage and everything? No, no, no sir. We couldn't do that. That's against all our regulations. Yes, sir. Well... How much do uh, a ticket uh, to Fort Worth cost? A uh, one-way ticket to Fort Worth is $50 even. That's for each seat? Yes, sir. So it's going to cost uh, $100 for her? Yes, yeah, she's going to need two seats, yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Well, you got a bus leaving here pretty soon? I do. I have one leaving at one ten. Yeah, one ten this afternoon. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I got a trailer out here behind this little old pickup. I, sometime I put up on there and pull around on it. I'm going to see if I can get it loaded up on there and uh, bring on down there to the bus station in just a few minutes and see if some of y'all could kind of help me get up in there and get on the way. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I sure appreciate your help, and I'm going to see you in a few minutes. All right. Thank you for calling. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Good evening, Lane Hallmark. Uh, yes, ma'am. Who is it, please? This is Rebecca. Rebecca. How you doing today? Fine. Yes, ma'am. I'm one of your customers down there. My name is Willie P. Richards. I stay out here on 3rd Street. And I got a uh, question to ask you. I want to buy something real nice for my girlfriend. Don't y'all have all kind of pretty gift items and everything down there? Yes, sir. Well, uh, see, this is real kind of touchy. My girlfriend stay about two houses down from where me and my wife stay. And my wife come in there shopping with y'all all the time and everything. If I was to buy something from you, y'all wouldn't tell her nothing, would you? No, sir. You wouldn't? No, sir. Uh-huh. Well, uh. What all kind of things y'all got down there? Uh, we've got plenty of different gifts. We've got crystal. We've got silver. We've uh -huh. uh, candlesticks. Uh, uh huh. Well, uh, Do you have anything in mind? Well, yes, ma'am. I want to probably spend four, five hundred dollars on. I uh, I took this money out of my wife's savings account. I don't want to find out about it. And I'm crazy about this woman, you know. And my wife, boy, she's getting old and ugly and everything. Treat me real bad all the time. And I'm trying to get me a new wife. And I was wondering, uh, I got the money in cash if I came on down there. Could you have me, you think? We might could. Uh-huh. I don't see why we couldn't. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, could y'all, you know, if you wrap it up real pretty and everything, probably take it out that far. Yes, sir. I think we could. Well, I got—I think I got five hundred and twenty something dollars here. I really wanted to spend about a thousand dollars on the woman, you know. And I, I was, of course, five hundred and twenty-three. I believe all I was able to get out that account. Uh, could I, if I picked out about a thousand dollars worth of stuff, could I pay, you know, go ahead and pay you that five hundred and twenty-three dollars, and then about two or three months from now, pay you the rest of it after I done gave it to you and everything? Um. Let's see. We might could do something like layaway, but we wouldn't be able to get it out until you paid for it completely. Y'all don't have no credit terms or nothing like that? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, if I, if I pick out all this stuff, I could go on and take the part I pay for, right? right? And leave the rest of it down there? Well, could every once in a while, could she just come down there and look at all them things, you know, till I get the money to get them out? Mm -hmm. Y'all can show them, too, and everything? I don't see why not. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Well... I might just do that then. Your name what? Rebecca? Uh-huh. You you uh, work there? Yes, sir. You going to be down there a pretty good while this evening? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no boyfriend, do you? Yes, sir, I do. You do have? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always looking for pretty women, you know. Well, Rebecca, I'll be down there pretty soon. Okay. And uh, I got 520. So you want me to ask for you? Do you make a commission if you sell something? No, sir, I You don't. don't. Well, would you help me, though? Y'all ain't going to say nothing about this now, are you? No, sir, we won't. Okay, I appreciate it, honey. Sure. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peppered Autoplex. Uh, yes, sir, who is it, please? This is Jay. Yes, sir, Mr. Jay, how you doing today? Good. I don't believe I know you. Uh, Somebody told me about y'all. Don't y'all rent cars out there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Willie P. Rich, and I stay over here on 3rd Street. And I was, I got a trip I need to make uh, to go pick up a sister of mine. And I was wondering, have you got a sort of a little small car or some kind of a rent out there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. About how much do it cost? $24.95 a day, 50 miles a day free, uh -huh. 15 cents a mile after that. Yes, sir. Well, I need to ask you something. What I'm going to do, she is fitting to get out the penitentiary out here at Gatesville. And I ain't got no, my old cars tore up and everything, and I ain't got no way to get her out and everything. And I was going to go out there and get her and bring her back over here to home uh, tomorrow. And uh, she she wants to drive. She's been in there about four or five years, and we're going to stop over here in Waco or somewhere and try to get her some driver license. 
Would it be all right if she drove after she get them license? Uh, she, she has to be on the rental agreement with yes. the driver's license number, so I don't see how in the world it work. Well, if I was to call you from over there after she gets them? I don't see why it wouldn't work. Yes, uh-huh. Well, uh, I tell you, this may sound kind of funny to you, and it's, and I, I, it's my sister and everything, but she a midget, and uh, she can't hardly see over the steering wheel. That's why I asked about a little bit of car like that, you know. She ain't but about three and a half feet tall. I guess she, sometimes she set up on a little cushion or something when she driving and everything. But her other sister want to go with us, and she played basketball up into college. She this sounds crazy, but she's about six three or four inches tall, and she want to ride up there in the front seat with her. If you got something, with, I guess it had to be like them bucket seats or something to keep them separated. Because you know if they had a bench seat, they couldn't both get up in there. Yes, I think I think everything I got's got a console in the middle. Yeah, it do. Well, uh, you say it's about twenty-five dollars a day, and then fifteen cents a mile after fifty miles. Yes, sir. Yes. Can we? How do we have to pay for that? Can we pay for it after we get back? No, sir. You can't. Well, what do y'all just figure out how far it is, and we have to pay it all for? Oh, get a uh, open credit card voucher. Yes. Before you leave. Uh huh. Uh. So you got to have a credit card to get one. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, Ma, I ain't got no credit card. If I got somebody else's, and had, you know, would that be all right? Whoever whoever rents a card has to be in their name. You yes. Know, if they want to rent the car and show you as an additional driver, and they got proof of liability insurance and a driver's license. That suits me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it don't make no difference about that. And you think after my sister get her license, it'd be okay for her to drive back. The only thing that kind of worried me about it, she, right before she went into the penitentiary about five years ago, she was acting real crazy. You might have seen in the paper about her. I think she got three or four DWIs and was fooling with drugs and everything, you know. But, but she insisted on driving back home from over there. And I'm trying to, you know, she's been in there so long, I'm trying to do something nice for her, you know. You think that would make any difference? <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to me. Whoever rents the car and puts their insurance up, you know, the one that's going to be at risk. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, reckon somebody's insurance will cover her. Like I guess somebody else's name on it, you know. I, I, I tell you what I think you're doing. I think you're taking a great risk. A risk? Yeah. Uh-huh. You mean letting her drive it? Uh-huh. Mm. Well, you know, she's been over there so long, I figured they probably got her straightened out by now. But you can't ever tell about people, you know. She's been writing these letters and everything, saying she's changed and all that. Done found religion and everything. Man, she used to be bad, too. So I don't know. Well, I sure think I'd get her home and see before I gave her too much freedom. <laughs> Check her out, huh? Yeah, she got to check in down here with a, what you call probation of people or something like that when she gets back. And uh, I guess they, I guess they tell her what she, you know, what all she can do and everything. Do y'all need any help out there? I bet you she ain't gonna be able to get no driver's license. You, you don't think so? No, not not immediately. Yes. I could be wrong, but I don't know much about that kind of stuff. Yes. Well, do y'all? You know, she gonna need a job once it gets out. And she used to be a bookkeeper, you know, but I know she might have to start out like washing cars or something like that. Y'all need any help out there? No, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all don't need no more salesmen or nothing out there. She could talk, nearly could talk her way out of everything. She didn't talk her way out of that last thing, but she always had been up to then. You know, everybody feels sorry for her being a midget and everything. Yes, sir. Yes, but ain't but two of us out here and we just handle things. Yes, sir. Okay, well, you ain't, you know, not, not, don't get upset by me asking this, but you ain't turning it down because we black or nothing, are you? No, sir. Mm -hmm. That ain't got nothing to do with it? No, sir. Mm -hmm. or, or because she a midget? No, sir. Or because she just got out the penitentiary? No, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I sure thank you for your help. All right. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Okay. Tax office, may I help you? Yes, ma'am. Is there a lady down there named Kathy? Yes, she is. Could I speak to her, please? Okay, hold on. 
Hello. Hello, Kathy. Yeah. My name is Willie Richardson. Uh-huh. I was down there yesterday afternoon, uh-huh. and I was, t- I believe it was you I was talking to. Uh, you you work one that, down one of them windows where they sell them license plates. Uh-huh. And I, I, I registered a, a car I got, but I want to ask you something. I got a, I got a wagon out here, like, sometimes pull it with mules. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, you know, I stayed about halfway on the road and halfway off the road with it. Do I get a, I got to get some license for that. Well, now, I can't tell you about that. I never uh, have registered a wagon. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, you know, I got two big old big old mules and everything, and I, I, a highway patrolman come by me looking at me the other day, and, of course, I was drinking some beer, too. Uh-huh. I reckon could you get a DWI driving a wagon? I, I can't tell you. Uh-huh. But i tell you who you can call. You can call the Department of Public Safety. Yes, ma'am. And ask them. Uh-huh. Well, look. If you were to register a wagon like that, would you? Uh, would I need to wait and everything like you do on a car? Yeah. Well, would I need to wait in mules too? Uh, yeah, I guess, but I, I don't want to tell you. Yeah, and you not have to. Yes, ma'am. You know. Uh huh. I, I don't think any of them are registered like when they pull them on the trail rides and things. Yes, ma'am. I've never heard of that. Yes, ma'am. Well, I sure don't want to get no ticket. You know. Well, I, I got. Uh, can you get a? You know, I don't drive no more. I can't hardly see nothing. Uh-huh. And I was wondering, do you have to get a driver license to, uh, you know, drive a wagon like that with mules pulling it? I just don't know. Uh-huh. Well, uh, so who who do you, who, who am I supposed to call about this now? The DPS office, Department of Public Safety. Uh-huh. And ask them, and what was your name? Willie P. Richardson. Okay. Willie P. Richardson. Yes, ma'am. I stay out here on 3rd Street. I was up there yesterday. And register an old car, an old piece of a car I got out here in the yard, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, all I can tell you is try the Department of Public Safety and see what they tell you. Yes, ma'am. What's your name now? I'm Kathy. Kathy? Uh-huh. You probably talked to Debbie. Debbie? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, I thought I talked to you. What you look like? No. You didn't talk to me because I wasn't here yesterday. Oh, you what? Well, I don't know. I don't know why I got that mixed up. Maybe I sent your name on a, you know, up there on or something or another. But, uh, well, look here. Uh, you know, but... Let me ask you one other thing. I know I'm keeping you, you know, from your work and everything, but if I didn't drive the wagon on the road at all, you know, like if I just stay over in a ditch, uh-huh. I, I probably wouldn't have to buy no license plates for it, would I? Well, I just really can't tell you because I'm not sure. Uh-huh. Well, just you, contact uh, the Department of Public Safety, and they'll tell you whether or not you have to have it licensed. Yes, ma'am. Well, you think I need to get an insurance card like you got for a car? I just don't know. Well, I don't believe you know nothing about anything down there, do you? Well, sir, why don't you just call the DPS office like I asked you to, and they can tell you what you need to know. Well, you done told me that about ten times. Well, just call that number, and they can tell you what you need to know. Okay, then. Somebody need to. I hope you don't make too much money, because you don't know nothing about anything well, down there. I don't make near enough. Well, thank you. Dutch's post office. This is Marvin. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Marvin. How are you doing today? Just fine. That's good. This is uh, Reverend Willie Richardson out here on 3rd Street. Mm-hmm. And I was needing to send a package off up to uh, Sacramento, California, mm-hmm. to a sister-in-law of mine over there. So what is the biggest thing you can send due to mail? You can send up to 70 pounds. 70 pounds. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, could this, this weighs 63 pounds. Okay. And could you tell me you what know, the... You have the zip code where it's going to? Oh, no, ma'am. It's Sacramento, California. Uh, let me see here. I can probably find it. Oh, I'm sorry. I should, it's 63 okay. pounds? Yes, ma'am. 63 how pounds. And how do you want to send it? Well, just by the mail, you just know. Just parcel post or first class or? Uh, probably. About how long do it take it? The quickest or what? What, what? About what is the, what it would both of? Parcel post is probably going to take anywhere from 7 to 14 days. Yes, ma'am. Now, okay. the priority mail, it can take up to maybe 5 days or so. Yeah, that cheapest way probably all okay. I can fold. Yes, ma'am. All right, hold on okay. just a second. Okay, for 63 pounds, mm-hmm. parcel post is $26.28. 26 dollars 28 okay, yes, ma'am. that's for 63 pounds. Uh-huh. Uh, i tell you what it is. <laughs> this may sound kind of crazy. Can you, uh, how long you say it'll take for that to get out there? Uh, anywhere from 7 to 14 days. Well, does it, uh, you think something could stay alive in there that long? Okay. i tell you what this is, is it's two goats. Mm. Two little old baby goats. 
And I was wondering if I put enough food in there with them. Can you send stuff like that through the mail? Oh, goodness. Uh, hold on just a second. Okay, then. <laughs> Sir? Yes, ma'am. No, we don't. You can't send goats to the mail. Live animals. Yes, ma'am. Well, she sent me a rabbit. I just got it this morning. Are you kidding? No, ma'am. It was all right, too. Oh, my goodness. Lord, I hope nobody, y'all ain't, y'all won't. She not told anybody she was doing that. No, it took it. I, it was postmarked about two weeks ago, and the little thing had really got skinny and everything. Yeah. It was nearly dead. It was just laying there barely breathing. I can't, you know, I was, but I, I, you know, me and her have been trading animals since we were little kids, and I wanted to send her these goats and everything. Yeah. There ain't no way if I just don't say nothing about it, they'd do it, you know. They I, probably would hear them, wouldn't they? Well, it? if it were to die, I don't, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Well, and it was about twenty something dollars. Uh, it was twenty six, twenty eight. Yeah, I, I might take them out here in one of these low country post offices. They probably wouldn't care nothing about it if I did that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Would that be all right, you think? That's up to you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, I sure appreciate. Okay. If they was to die, I guess they could just you know throw it away or something, you know. Yeah. Well, okay then. All I right. sure do appreciate. Uh -huh. it. Bye bye. bye. Yes, ma'am. How are you this morning? I'm fine, and you? Real good. Is Mr. Wallace in, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Say who's calling. Uh, this is Reverend Willie Richardson. Really? Willie Richardson? Yes, ma'am. Reverend Willie Richardson from Houston. Okay. Just a moment. Thank you. This is David Wallace. Uh, yes, sir. Brother Wallace, how you doing today? This is Reverend Richardson. From, I'm from Houston. Yes, sir. And we have a, a senior citizens choir that, uh -huh. that tours around the country. And a lot of time we, we sing in white churches. Yes, sir. And we're going to be up in your area uh, in August. And I was wondering, would y'all be interested in having us come by uh, and, and sing a couple of numbers with your choir on probably the, the, the 13th of August when we're going to be up that way? 13th of August. Yes, sir. It's it's just elderly people, you know, and, you, and sometime if y'all have some people down our way, we'd like to have you uh, yeah, sing. Well, we have a senior adult choir here too. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. and uh, and we, they just love to sing. Uh huh. Oh, no. Yes. Sir. Tell you what, let me get your name and call you back. Let me talk with the pastor. Okay. Let me let me ask you this about it now. I know y'all are we are, we just a small Baptist church down here, uh -huh. and and y'all are y'all a Baptist church, right? Yes. Sir. Uh, uh huh. Uh. And I know that some churches, you know, the people's act more reserved than they do in others. Some of these, <laughs> some of these old sisters are saying, "Well, let's get kind of carried away," you know. You, kinda carried away. you think it would scare people, you know, if, if if they, you know, if they got a little bit crazy acting and some of them run down the aisle and stuff like no, that. No, we're not. We're not that traditional. You know. So it wouldn't. You don't think it'd make no difference to nobody? I don't think it would. Uh huh. Well, uh, about how much you think y'all could, you know, give us a little bit of a love offering for singing up there? I don't know. I'd really need to talk with the pastor before I uh -huh. would, could tell you anything. Yes, sir. I'd hate to have to tell you something and then take it back. Yes, sir. Well, let me ask you, is the a, is a reason you kind of being hesitant about this because we're black? No, sir. It's not? No, sir. As a matter of fact, we're relocating our church. Uh-huh. And we're located in an area that that is predominantly black. Uh-huh. But, but that's why y'all moving, though? Well, uh, no, because we're out of space. Oh, I see. And uh, we really fill the place up and yes. have for a few years, and we feel like if we're going to grow, we either need to build more of what we have or we need to go somewhere else and build more space. Yes. Uh -huh. And most of our people have moved from this neighborhood just because that's the way it is. Uh -huh. And they live in the, in the north part of town, and so we're looking at relocating there. Yes, ma'am. And we're working real closely with a black church of uh, taking our facilities when we relocate. Yeah. Well, we, we, we you know, we tried all over these years trying to improve relations with all our brothers, no yeah. matter what color they is. You know, we tried not to let that have nothing to do with anything. In fact, my my daughter married to a, a white preacher, one of the big white churches here in Houston. Is that right? Uh-huh, sure is. Well, and then the people didn't, you know, they wouldn't all accept it at first, but now it's all right with them. Well, and their kids kind of look funny. You know, you can't <laughs> tell whether they're white or black, but, you know, I'm, I'm their granddaddy. I don't, it don't make no difference to me. Well, that's right. People mm -hmm. are just folks. That's right. Well, look here, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm on the road right now. I have oh. to call you back, so... Uh, you going to talk to him pretty soon, you think? Yes, okay. I should see him uh, after lunch sometime. Okay, well, I'll give you a call back, Brother Wallace. Thank you. Amen.
Hello? Hello, Miss Susan. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Doing just fine. Yes, ma'am. This is Willie Richardson. Uh -huh. My wife and I trades up there with you sometimes. Right. And looking, I was I was listening to a commercial on the radio this morning about some pills they call them ginseng or something like that. Ginsana? Ginseng or ginsana or something like that. Yeah. What do what do they do now? Okay. That is a ginseng extract is what it is. When you get an extract, it's just a real strong form of an herb, okay? Yes, ma'am. And what ginseng is, is an herb that uh, helps to get all your body systems working with each other instead of against each other. Yes, ma'am. I've been feeling bad. They feel like they're working against each other. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, especially as hot as it is outside. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. And that's, that's another thing ginseng does is it helps your body cope with heat much better. Say it do. We uh -huh. ain't got no air conditioning out here. Oh, it's hot. Mm, it has been hot. And anyway, it, it helps your immune system, so it helps keep you from getting sick. It helps your energy level, so it helps keep you from feeling so tired and fatigued all the time. Oh. If you have high blood pressure, it helps to lower it. Or if you have low blood pressure, it helps to raise it. So it works really, really good just to, to help you feel better and feel more energetic without making you feel real nervous or hyper. Yes, ma'am. It won't cause you to have no heart attack or nothing. No, no. It's, it's actually good for your heart. It helps strengthen it. Say it is. Mm -hmm. Well, how much do it cost? Um... The Ginsana, I'm out of it right now, but the one that's advertised on, on the TV yes, is $19.99 for a bottle of 30 30 okay? mm -hmm. There's another one called Ginseng 500 that, to be honest with you, I think is a much better product. Yes, ma'am. And it is a bottle of 60 for $16.95, so it's less expensive, too. Uh-huh. Well, let me ask you this. I hate to ask a woman about something like this, but I will. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. Well, you think this might improve your love life? I've been having a little, you know, some problems. They you know what I'm talking. You know what I'm talking about. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And they say it does. They say that it is. Well, as a matter of fact, that's kind of what ginseng's been known for is like the the love drug. You know. Say it is. Uh huh. Well, so my, my wife and I both need to take it in so we can do better at <laughs> that. Yeah, see, I can keep up with each other. Yes, that sounds pretty good to me. I may get a. How long do it take for it to take effect that, on you? That, it's not something that's going to start working right away. It's the Oriental say to consider ginseng a food yes, and to take it every day. So you need to take it for, I'm going to say, probably three weeks to a month before you're going to be able to tell much difference. Yes, ma'am. Well, well, I guess I can wait that long. It's been a good while anyway. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Do your husband take it? Uh, well... Man, he might, he might not need it. I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't take it. I've tried to get him to take it, but my husband's not real good about taking supplements. He's just not too good at swallowing pills, but yeah. I take it. Has he, he had any problem like what I'm talking about? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma well, uh, y'all sure got a good store up there. I came up there here a few days ago and got me some... Uh, some kind of that carrot juice or something. Uh -huh. mm, I got out here and put me a little vodka in it. Man, that did make it good, what I'm talking about. Y'all don't y'all don't sell, y'all can't do that up there like mix alcoholic drinks with that. No, uh -huh. yes, we don't have a license to do that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you might think about that. That probably would sell up there. <laughs> probably that would. That carrot and vodka would. juice, that sounds crazy. I never had, had nothing like that before. That was really good. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, let, do y'all have any kind of credit terms up there if I was to get me a couple of hundred dollars worth of stuff and like pay it out about a month or something? Uh, no, sir, we don't do that. Yes, ma'am. Well, well, look here, I sure appreciate your help. All right. You have a good day now. I'm going to come get me some of them pills and see okay. if that'll help me and my wife. Thank you. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Hello? Yes, ma'am, Miss Kitchen? Yes. Yes, ma'am, I was just talking to you. Yes. Oh, uh, my name is Lucretia Wilson. Uh-huh. And my little, uh, my little granddaughter was up there about... I guess about three, four weeks ago, and had a baby, uh -huh. and uh, I, they gave me your name, said you took uh, care of her, uh -huh. and uh, she she ain't very old, she just like 14 years old, and, and uh, uh, her grandpappy had gave her a nice, uh, pretty watch, and when she came home, she didn't have it, and I was wondering, it was about a, about a two, three hundred dollar watch. And uh, for, for the granddaughter? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh, gave it to her for a baby present, you know. He bought it from a guy who lived down the street down here that, uh, well, I don't know where he got it. But anyway, uh, uh, yes, ma'am, well, it came up missing. Uh -huh. And they said you were the one who took care of it and everything. And I was wondering, have you seen anybody around there wearing a, a pretty watch like that? Oh, call, call. Watch, huh? Yes, ma'am. 
Well, do you remember my little girl? My little uh -huh. girl. I'll have to look at the book and sign down. Uh-huh. Because we've had too many coming through here. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, uh -huh. this was her This was her third baby. She's been up there several times. And uh, we just all... Are you sure it was me that looked at it? Because I don't even remember looking at one. Yes, ma'am. They gave... They gave me your name, ain't you? Is it Barbara Kitchell? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they said you took care of it and everything. And, uh, you know, we we ain't got much money, and you spent a lot of money on this watch, and we just, we real upset about it, because cause now we, we're out here, and uh, we just had to let her have a car go back and everything. Yeah. And we were going to have to sell that watch to, 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 to stay down on another car. No, I don't know. I don't know a thing about that watch. You didn't. You didn't take it yourself, now, did you? Uh, well, no. Why would I want to take a watch? Well, I didn't know. You know, I just thought you might want to sell it. Or you, what kind of watch you wearing? I'm wearing a little Timex. Oh, uh, that's what it was. What well, color is the one you got on? I didn't take that darn watch, and don't you call me back no more. Okay, ma'am. I'm sorry. How you doing, Mr. Norman? Th this couldn't be. Yeah, this is Willie P. Richardson, the Willie. Bob prankster, you know. Willie! How you doing this morning? This this is an honor. Well, it's an honor for me to talk now, to you. Uh, you know, uh, for those of you who are watching, I guess uh, if, uh, one of the hottest, if not the hottest uh, uh, comedy albums out right now is called Phone Pranks. Sure is. That's your album. Sure is, Mr. Norman. Now, and I understand that not only that, but uh, I understand that a national label, same one that Jeff Foxworthy, who did the Redneck album, is going to uh, handle that. That's right. It's going to be in stores all over everywhere here for long. We just put it out around here, you know, and it did so well that they decided to take it. And it's going to be at, well, I can't say the name of Walmart and Hastings and, <laughs> no, and all no. them, but it's going to be an all-in within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, see, when we make commercial, I mean, when we make announcements here, they have to be like non-profit, uh, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I ain't made no money out of it yet. So <laughs> Uh, you know that I know the answer to that trivia. Do you? Do you, you know? Think, you wouldn't think I'd know nothing about country music, but that, that I believe that was Jesse Colton. She married old Waylon. Now that's right, that's man. That is, that is right. Brother. I used to be a country music fan. You did you? Uh huh. Were you uh, in the Navy with Farron Young? Yeah, I was in the Navy with Farron back in the about <laughs> fifty two. <laughs> I gotta tell you something, Norman. I what? know you're busy and getting calls and everything, but I gotta tell you something happened to me yesterday. What that? Well, I was at one of the nicest restaurants here in town. Uh, well, me and my old lady. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, th this may kind of sound rough, but we came we came out the restaurant, just had a nice meal and everything. And yeah. I, and I looked down at the ground right by my car door, and there was a there was a person's toe laying there. A toe? A human toe, man. Laying right there by the car. It scared me to death. Oh, it, it, was, it was gross looking. I ain't going to go into the description, but <laughs> I, it had the I, bones sticking out the back and everything. I, I you know. can imagine. So yeah. went back in the cafe there and told the manager about it. Yeah. And uh, they came outside and, man, all, looked all around everything. I was looking all off in the ditch to see if there was, you know, the rest of the person was around there somewhere. <laughs> I didn't know what happened. It was a guy mowing grass over there. I thought maybe he cut his toe off. Could have been. But he didn't. He was still working. But oh. anyway, uh, they went back and then called the police. The police department came out there and they detained us. Ain't that what you call it? Talked to us for yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, it just like scared me to death. I can imagine. It was hard. Well, what happened to the tow? Come on. Well, they finally called the tow truck, Mr. Norman. <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, look here. I got to go now. I want everybody to be looking for my record in well, the tow. Now, do you get a free tow with the album? A free tow with each one, you know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You get. You've got to select your prize. You get a a free game of bowling, Willie, or a a, a tan at studio. Uh, you probably don't need the tan. Well, not the tan. Will not help me none. Okay. And uh, and the calendar, pen, and decal. Uh, what was the first one? A free game of bowling. Uh, oh, my old lady weighs 400 pounds. She can't hardly bowl. Yeah. She got so large. Uh, I yeah. take the pen and the decal so I can advertise for you. All right, all right. We'll, we'll deliver that to you. Okay, then. And it's an honor to have you on the show. It's an honor to talk to you, a legendary Nacogdoches <laughs> figure and country music figure, Mr. Norman Johnson. <laughs> Don't touch your 
Yes, ma'am. This is Dennis Hall. Yes, you called and hung up on me. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I, I got disconnected somewhat. Yes, ma'am. I had a question for you, hoping maybe you could hear me with uh -huh. something. I don't have no dentists up here in this area. I just moved up here from Houston, mm -hmm. Texas. And before I left down there, I had some uh, gold and a silver uh, teeth that's put in my mouth, you know. And lately, when I lay down at night, uh, this may sound crazy. Is but it supposed to hurt? No, I can hear a radio station. Well, I don't know anything about that one. I honest it's, to God, I've never heard of that. You had? No, sir, I yes, really had. I really, I really can't. can't. I really hadn't heard it. No, you yes, remember? but it, I mean, I'll tell you what now, seriously. You really can't hear? Are, I the, can hear, are the two teeth right side by side? Yes, ma'am, they're right side by side. And I'll tell you what, my old lady says she can't hear it enough, but I can't even go to sleep for it. Have you ever heard anything like no, that? No, but let me go ask Dr. Rachel. Well, just, right? just a minute. Let me, I, 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 I don't want you to bother him. I just want to ask you a couple of things. And I, and I, uh, cause this, I know this sounds crazy. Uh, she, you know, she says she can't hear them. And I done called, I called two d dentists down there in Houston before I left. The one that did it was out of town. And he said, uh, I mean, he, he, of course, the lady worked for him to act like she thought I was crazy or something. And I called another one I didn't know, and they act like they thought I was crazy. But really, it's been, I guess it's been like 1992 for while I was ever, since I was ever in any kind of, you know, had any kind of mental problems or anything. But I'm all right now. But uh, I was wondering, uh, you think like when I talk that, that people could hear me on the radio? You no, know, what, when I'm talking? I don't have any idea. The only thing that you might be experiencing yes, is what they call galvanic shock. Galveston. Galvanic. Galvanic. Shock. And that's where you have two different types of metal side by side. Yes, ma'am. Running, rubbing together. Uh-huh. And that can cause something called galvanic shock. Galvanic yeah, shock. Yes, sir. But as far as anything else, I have never heard of anything else. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying I've never heard of it. Oui. But I do know that you can get galvanic shock and it'll, it'll absolutely, it'll make you feel like if you've ever taken your fork and stuck it uh, accidentally into one of your feelings and how it makes you just, it just shock pain. Yes, ma'am. that I can, you know, I'm... And it could be what you're experiencing is galvanic shock, but I've just never heard of it in that form. Before. Well, it won't, it won't, you know, you said shock, it won't eventually get where it electrocute you or no, something, no, like no, I pick no, up a spark no, off no, of something. It'll just be, it'll just be, have you ever bit down on something on a fork and it would shock your mouth because you hit a feeling with that? Yes, ma'am, I know what you mean. Well, that's the only thing that you'll be experiencing as far as I know. You don't think there's no way y'all could stop this from doing this, so? That's why I'm saying, let me go and ask Dr. Rector, I don't okay. Just, just, but I tell you, while you're in there, would you ask him, Miss Hen, if he can't, if he can't stop it all together, you know, at least reckon if he could just put it on a different radio station or something. You know, I don't particularly like the kind of music it's playing. You know. Well, I don't think we could do that, sir. You don't? No, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, look here. I'm. Uh, I got to leave town, and I'll call you when I when I get back. But I, I sure do appreciate your help. Uh huh. And I'll be in there to see you. It's Billy. Uh, yes, sir. Is this the fishing bait store down by the lake? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, how you doing today? I'm doing fine, sir. Uh, yes, sir. This is Willie P. Richardson. Uh, look here. I was out there fishing last night, and it was just getting dark, and I caught one of the biggest basses you ever seen in your life. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was so strong, it, it pulled my boat around in circles for a few minutes till it <laughs> tied out. And one of my boys and my old lady was with me, and she weighed over 400 pounds. And he was trying to help me get the fish in, and uh, I was just using a cane pole and a little perch for bait. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he uh, leaned over the side of the boat, and all that weight, my old lady's weight, mainly caused the boat to lean way over to one side. And he fell off in the lake, but uh, he was wearing a life jacket and everything, so he, he was all right. He climbed back up in the boat with me, and I'm, uh, I'm glad she didn't fall in. We never would have got her big old self back up in the boat. <laughs> Well, anyway, after I got it in the boat, took me about 15 minutes to get it in. Man, that thing was so big, it cracked my pole about halfway up, and we really had to work to get it up into the boat. And finally got it up there close enough to get his head off in that dip net, and then my son got a hold of it and uh, drug it on up into the boat. Yes, sir. Well, I ain't never seen a bass this big. Uh, I figured it might be some kind of state or world record or something, and I might be able to get some money out of it. Yes, sir. Why didn't you bring it up here and weigh it? Well, I did come up there, but y'all had just closed the store and everything was getting in your pickup to leave, and I didn't want to bother y'all, so I took it home. Man, I drove all around the neighborhood, and everybody showed it to these peoples, and I was getting them all up out of bed to look at it. Everybody said they ain't never seen no bass that large. I had it, uh, had it in a big old tub in the back of my pickup, and it was still alive and swimming around in it, and 
several of these people's had their pictures took with it there. Uh, I didn't have no camera with me, so I'm hoping some of them pictures turned out good. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, did you weigh it? Uh, yes, I did. It weighed 23 pounds. Hmm. I uh, weighed it on a scale at the grocery store, so I know that that was the right weight. And a friend of mine told me last night that the state record for what they call a large mouse bass like this here was just over 18 pounds and was 25 inches long, and I think they had caught it up at that lake fork. Well, this here fish is 31 inches long, and uh, I was thinking if it be, if, you know, if it did be the state record, I might get my own, you know, TV show about fishing, you know, and maybe get one of these boat companies to give me a boat, you know, for advertisement, and even maybe get me some of them clothes to wear to have all them patches with pictures of fish on them. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, if that fish is really that big, uh, you might, but you need to you need to take it to uh, call the Parks and Wildlife uh, people and take it to their office. Yes, yeah, so, well, where, uh, well, I'll do that, but where's their office? It's on Adkinson Drive in Lufkin. Say it is. Yes, sir. Well, I was wondering about this hint. Last night, uh, after I took it all around and showed it and everything, we had a big fish fry and invited all the next door neighbors over and we cooked it and picked some hush puppies with it, <laughs> you know, and had a big fish fry. You mean you cooked the fish that might be the state record? Well, yes, sir. But I tell you, I saved the head and that bone, you know, that bone to go all the way uh, down mm -hmm. through the middle of it, mm -hmm. and all that's still in one piece, and I figured that they might could just look at that and tell how big it was and how much it weighed and everything. No, sir, I, I don't believe they'll certify just looking at, at that. You, you made a big mistake by, by not keeping the whole fish, sir. Say I did. Yes, well, sir. Is, uh, there any way you could just tell them, you know, that you've seen it while it was in one piece and that you waited? They, you know, they probably believe you since you fools with deals with fishes all the time anyway. Uh, no, sir, I don't I don't believe they take my word for it. Show sure enough? No. Well, that show do disappoint me. Uh, I guess I'll just come back up there again this evening and see if I can catch me another one. All right. Bring it to the picture. I, 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 when you get it, I'd like to see it. I sure will. I'm adding the picture. going to be pretty good size by itself. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Ellen. Yes, ma'am. Miss Ellen, how you doing today? Okay. Uh, you don't know me. My name is Willie P. Richardson. I stays down in Nacogdoches, Texas. But I was originally from Bradley, Arkansas. And my, my pappy still stay over there. He's about 90 years old. In fact, I'm over here visiting him right now. And he, I believe he's 91 now. And we was trying to place to put him in. One of them policemen down at Bradley gave me your name. Said you might could help me. Said you... Okay, would you hold on this minute and I'll, let, I'll give you to the, the other one that's well, supposed to do that. Is it Ellen McMurray? It's, uh, I'm going to let you talk to Ann. Uh -huh. Well, no, ma'am, I, I want could you please help me with something, though? No. I, I, I ain't never talked to nobody at a nursing home like this before. And before you put me off, I just, I want to tell you a couple of things about it before you put me on this other lady, if you could help me. Okay. Uh, he got this real bad uh, stomach problem. He's sitting here right now. And I've had him in two different places in Texas, and they they uh, ask us to leave and everything because he makes so much racket and everything, and he can't stop doing this. And he's sitting here in the room with me right now. Can you hear him? Can you hear him now? Mm -hmm. And he do that, I mean, it's like round the clock just about, you know. And they've had, they had us to leave a couple of places he'd been in. And I was wondering, you know, if we got him a room or something like that, you could put him put him way down at the end of the hall and open the windows or something, and I could buy a fan or something to put in there, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Could you all do that, you think? Well, I don't know. I'm not the one that, that does that. Mm -hmm. Well. I mean, I'm the one. Ann's the one that, that takes all the information. Yes, ma'am. Well, I tell you, he something else about him, too. He likes women's real well. Do, do y'all ever let them stay together or anything like that? No. You don't? Not, not really. You I don't? Mean, they may do it, but we... <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, uh, uh, about how much do it cost to keep somebody in there? Well, that's what I say. Ann's the one that does that. I don't. Yes, ma'am. You think all that racket... Papa, could you... Ma Sister, could you roll him off in yonder? That's, I, I can't even talk to this lady for this racket. Roll him in yonder if you don't mind, honey. Okay, oh. okay then. Uh, but anyway, y'all got a pretty nice place there? Mm-hmm. You do? Uh-huh. And you don't know how much it costs to keep no, somebody? No, I don't do that. Yes, I don't do that part. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I don't 
know. She bringing him back in here now. Poor old thing. I ain't never heard nobody with a problem. We've taken two or three doctors, you know, and they can't do nothing about this. And, and I can't keep him around here. I mean, I can't take him to Texas with me because I work all the time, you know. And the uh, last two or three places, like I said, the noise and, you know, everything's so bad, they ask us to get him out of there, you know. Well, sister, won't take him back in here, and I'm trying to talk to this lady. But, what is your father's name? Uh, Earl P. Richardson. My name is Willie P. Richardson. You might know, do you know some of the Richardson's stay out there at Bradley? Mm -hmm. You don't? Mm -hmm. Yeah, been up there a long time. He 90, just turned 91, I believe. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Well. But now, Ann can tell you exactly. I can't. She can. Uh-huh. Well. She can tell you exactly how much. Uh, okay, then. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to, uh, somebody hollering at me right here now. I'm going to have to go right now, but I'll call back and I'll ask for Miss Ann uh, later on today. Okay. And uh, you sure have been a lot of help, but you... Uh, I'll, I'll be back in touch with y'all. Okay. okay then. Bye bye, honey. Rest Haven. Uh, yes, sir. Is this a cemetery? Well, it's a cemetery office. Yes, I need some advice or probably some help about something. All right. Uh, my pappy passed about four months ago up in Dallas. Yes. Sir. And uh, he was buried up there. Yes. Sir. Well, uh, he said that he wanted to be buried here, here in town, next to my mama. And uh, he got remarried after my mama passed several years ago, and he married her. It's just so rich woman from up in Dallas. And when he died back on the fourth of June, she just didn't pay no attention to what he had wanted us to do or nothing. And she had him buried there in Dallas, which is a long way from here. Well, sometimes family in these situations get uh, complicated at times like that. Yes, sir. Well, let me tell you, uh, my brother and I went up there last weekend, and we dug him up. Sir? Yes, sir. We just got to worrying about thinking about what Pappy had told us on his deathbed, you know, about where he wanted to be buried. So we just went up there and dug him up. I tell you what, it took all night. Man, that's some hard work, too, and it's scary out there in that graveyard by yourself at night. Uh, sir, do you know that's illegal? Say what? Illegal. It's against the law. You, you just can't do that without some kind of court order. Well, that code order, uh, yeah, I heard about something about that, but that would have took too long. And this is what Pappy had told us he wanted. And uh, we we got him out here in the garage. In fact, uh, that old woman had buried him in an outfit that he just couldn't stand to wear. So uh, me and my brother got his uh, favorite pair of overalls this morning and put them on him. And, and I'll tell you something else. You might not even know this about people that buried that at your own cemetery, probably. They buried him without no shoes on. And, man, I couldn't believe that because they had called me and told me to bring some shoes down there. And I took the nicest ones he had down to the funeral home. And they said they'd put them on him because you can't see up under there and can't see their feet when they're in that casket and everything. So I guess one of them funeral home guys probably wearing his shoes or, yeah, they probably sold them to somebody. But that's pretty low down, ain't it? Uh, sir, what's your name and address? What you want to know that for? Well, you, you violated the law and this is a serious matter and I'm required to report it. Report it? Yes, sir. I have to report it to the authorities. Well, I ain't going to tell you that, but i tell you what we might do. We might just come out there to your cemetery tonight and bury him in there. Sir, you can't do that. Well, what if we just picked out a spot where there ain't too many people's buried and put him in there? It wouldn't make no difference, would it? Sir, you can't do that. You can get in some very serious trouble for that. Say you can. Don't bring your father to this cemetery. If you won't tell me who you are, then you should contact the authorities yourself. Well, I'm free to contact anybody now. Well, you can't keep his body in your garage or anywhere else. You have to contact the authorities. The authorities? Who, what you talking about authorities? You call the police, the sheriff's department, and they'll assist you. Well, i tell you what we probably better do. We're just going to bury him out here in the backyard, and that way he'll be close to us. That'll be all right, one. Look, I told you, and I told you, what you've done is against the law. You can't do this. Well, we done did it, and we can't go back up out of Dallas and rebury him. We might get caught doing that. Uh, we fill that grave back up with dirt that night and, and put all that grass back up on top of it. You can't even tell that he ain't there no more. And we wasn't even going to put no headstone down here at the cemetery. We just going to bury him next to my mama. And that way, you know, everybody in the family would would know where it was and everything. Mm-hmm, sure was. Sir, what's your name? Well, look here, I got to go, but I sure do appreciate your help. Bye-bye.
William Plumbing. Yes, ma'am. How you doing today? I'm fine. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. I got some kind of an unusual problem. Well, maybe we can help. What's your problem? Well, my boys was playing back here in the creek behind the house the other day, and they caught this water mark, you know, one of them snakes. Yes, sir. Well, they took it in the house, still alive, and it flushed it down the commode. Yes, sir. Is your commode stopped up now? Uh, no, ma'am. You can flush it and everything, but we all scared to use it. Scared to use it? <laughs> Yes, ma'am, we all afraid to sit down or afraid that thing might, you know, swim back up in there and bite one of us while we're using the bathroom. Well, if they flushed it, it should be gone. It shouldn't come back up. It should completely be gone out of your plumbing system. Should be. Yes, sir. You shouldn't have to worry about yes, it. Yes, ma'am, you keep on saying should. That don't sound like you're too sure about it to me. Well, it's not likely that the snake should be still alive in your commode. Well, I tell you what, the other night my wife was sitting in there using the bathroom and she thought she heard something down in there and she jumped off that commode, wasn't even through using the bathroom. And I heard her hollering in there. I was out in the front yard drinking some beer with some of my friends, scared us off and we heard her hollering. And then I came back out and told my friends what was wrong. One of them hollered in there too and told her not to sit all the way down on the pot if she worried about that snake being in there. Well, of course, she got mad about that. Came out on the front post, started throwing things at us. And then one of my old neighbors stayed next door called the police. They came out here and uh, charged us all, what you call disorderly conduct, and took us all down to jailhouse. Yes, sir. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that, but I don't think you have to worry. Well, y'all got one of them rooter things you can come stick down in here to see if uh, that snake's still down in there? Yes, sir, but that's expensive. About how much do it cost? Well, the service should cost um, probably over $100. $100? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just can't afford that much. Well, I'm real sorry. Well, do you think that you might be able to come out here and go in the bathroom and sit on that commode for a while? Just show my wife and all of them. Ain't no need to worry about that snake. <laughs> no, sir. I can't do that. Well, y'all's ad in the phone book say your customers come first. Well, I couldn't do that. We just don't do that. Yeah, well, I guess I'm going to have to take my business when these other plumbing companies in. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for calling. Well, thank you. Bye. Elections, this is Pat Mialpi. Yes, ma'am. Is this where you find out where you're supposed to go vote? Yes, it is. Well, maybe you can help me with this. You know, I voted absentee a couple of weeks ago. I thought I was going to be out of town on election day coming up, and now I found out that I'm going to be here, so I need to know where I'm supposed to go vote again. Well, sir, you said you already voted absentee. Yes, ma'am, I have. Well, you can't vote again in this election if you've already voted. Well, why can't I? Well, that's the law. Nobody can vote more than one time in a single election. Well, I've done it lots of times before. Sir? Yes, ma'am. Just about every election, some of these candidates will come by and give me and my old lady $10 a piece to vote for them. And, you know, we own a fixed income, and that money really do come in handy every year, so sure do. Well, candidates aren't supposed to be paying people to vote for them. Well, why not? I thought that's the way they all do it. It seemed like the ones with the most money always win the election. Well, maybe it seems that way, but that's not the way it works. Well, I'll tell you what, I had one of them come by here this morning and give us $20 to go vote for him next month. Because I needed the money real bad, and I didn't tell him that I'd done already voted two weeks ago. In fact, I had voted for that other fellow that he running against, because he had came by here, and he gave us one of these, I think he called gift certificates, or whatever you call it, for six hamburgers and six orders of french fries and six soda water. And me and my old lady went to town and voted for him that very day, and then went on and uh, got them hamburgers and soda waters and french fries and ate them. But, you know, I didn't think it'd make no difference if we voted, voted for both of them, because, uh, you know, two votes ain't going to make no difference no how. Well, sir, you just can't do that. And I need the names of both of those candidates. Well, I ain't going to be able to tell you that. I just uh, need to know where I can go vote again without causing no trouble is all I'm trying to find out. Well, we have a list of all the people that have voted, so if you try to vote again, we'll know. It's called a poll list. A poll list? I ain't never heard of no poll list. Yes, it's all the people that have already voted in their precinct. Well, what if I just goes to a different precinct? Well, if you go to a different precinct than you're supposed to, then your name won't be on the voter list. Say they won't. Well, what if I just tell them I just moved into that precinct? Sir, you should go to the courthouse and report the names of the candidates that are paying you to vote, because buying votes is a criminal offense. Well, one of them already work at the courthouse. Am I supposed to go tell him? You know, what? I done spent his money and had to buy a tire from old pickup this morning, what I used it for, and... Uh, Man, man, you think he could find out if I didn't go vote for him? 
sure. It's public record. Anybody can look at the voter list. Well, do it tell who you voted for, though? No, it won't tell who you voted for, but your name will appear on the list. Well, I done spent the money and ate the hamburgers. Man, ain't this, ain't this him a mess? Uh, I could probably come up with that twenty dollars. Reckon you or your husband or some of your friends, if I gave you the money, could go vote for this fella? <laughs> no, sir, we can't do that. Uh, what is your registration number? I don't know my registration number. Uh, I lost it after I voted that first time. Sure wish I could find it, though. Again, they didn't put no markings or nothing on it. It'd probably be easy to use it again. And I wish I could go up there and vote for that fellow that come by here this morning. You know, everybody entitled to the right to vote. Yes, sir, that's right, but not twice in one election. Who are you, sir? Well, I can't tell you that, but I will tell you I'm just a concerned citizen and voter involved in politics. Mm, I think I'd be concerned, too, if I were in your shoes. Well, I sure do appreciate your help. I got to go now. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Delivery. This is Linda. May I help you? Yes, ma'am. How are you doing this evening? Just fine. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to bother you, and this may sound crazy. I've been trying to get a hold of a veterinarian for about the last two or three hours. My cow is going have a baby out here. Uh-huh. And I don't know nothing about all this. I'm about to get really scared about it and everything, and I was wondering, you know, what all am I supposed to do and everything? Can you help me with that, you think? What is your cow doing? Well, you know, the cow been... How long after one of them gets pregnant do it have a baby? It's usually nine months. Just like a person. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Nine months and nine days. Well, the cow laying down on the ground out here, acting, you know, kind of acting like it's hurting and everything, moaning and going on. And do they just have one at a time? Or they, they usually have one at a time, yes. Well, show sure it got big. It's, this cow looks like it weighed about three, four hundred pounds more than it did before it got pregnant. Uh-huh. So, uh... You know, I don't know what to do, just have the baby, or I have to stand and watch it, or I have to pull on it, or what? Well, well usually, unless the patient is good, unless the baby, the, the you know, the calf's coming out feet first. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the cow will do it all by herself. That's all you got to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, You might have well, to... Well, I always see on TV when somebody's going to have a baby, they got to get some hot water and all that. I got to do all that. What's all that supposed to do? Cows have been doing this for years. Say to you. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They've been doing this for years. I haven't had to pull any of oh, I mean, I'm not saying I'll never have to, but yes, I haven't had to pull any of mine. They've all done it by themselves. They just do it by themselves? Yes. Well, do I need to, you know... Uh, I keep an eye on her. Yeah, I will, but look at, let me ask you this here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to sell this cat at an auction barn pretty soon. Uh-huh. Uh, do you get some kind of birth certificate or something for a cat like no. you do a person? You don't have to do that? No. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of, you register them, anything like no, that? No, uh-uh, not if the, if the cow wasn't registered to begin with, no. Wasn't registered? Yeah, if you didn't have papers with the cow when you got her. Yes, ma'am, you have to, now, I'm, I'm just kind of ashamed to ask you this, him, but you have to, like, you know, what you call cut the cord and all that? No, 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 she takes care of all of it. She takes care? The cow does it all. It does? Uh-huh. So I ain't really got to do nothing here? No. No reason for me to be worried No, uh-uh. I keep an eye on her, and if it, you know... She'll probably do it just fine by herself. Man, I tell you what, I done sit here and drank about a half a quarter of vodka no. worried about this. No, don't worry Man, about just it. Going, do it. Yeah, I'm kind of like one of them daddies, I guess, come right. up there walking the halls where right. y'all is. Mm -hmm. Mine all do it in the e at nighttime when I can't see them, which is just as well, because yeah. like you said, I'd worry about them, too. Well, I, I got it up here in the garage. Oh. I, I got it up here close to the house when it started acting weak knee uh -huh. and everything, got it up in, got it right out here in the garage with all the lights on, all the kids, one of my kids was trying to sit on the cow's head and I had to get him off. You know? I just, uh, you know what, do you have a pasture or a small pasture or a pen to put her in? A pasture, like a preacher. A pasture, you oh. know, um, you know, the, the, a yard. Oh, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. I'd put her out in that or, you know, I mean, she needs hay and stuff because she's going to need to eat and drink as soon as she's done. Yes ma'am. You know, and I just let her be. That's all the excitement and everything. I've seen a cow stop labor with all the excitement going oh, on. Oh, Lord, I don't want to stop it right so in the middle of it. You know. But what if it had, sometimes do they have like four or five cows at no, the time? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very, very rare. I've read of somebody having three before, but not. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Well, I couldn't, you know, if it acts start like it's really hurting and everything, is there anything way I could bring up there? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I couldn't pull up out there behind, you know, oh. where the emergency door is. No, they, they're not going to, they're going to send you away. You need to call the vet. Who? 
the veterinarian. Yeah, I've been trying to call any of them home. But I tell you what. They get an answering service. Yeah. They would have them call you. Oh, they would, isn't there? Well, okay then. I tell you what. My other phone out here ringing. I'm gonna have to go now. Okay. But I sure appreciate your help, honey. And I, I'll bring it. I, I may bring a picture of this cat. What's your name, Linda? Linda? Okay. You okay. work up there every day. Uh huh. Okay then. Okay. Bye bye, honey. Bye. Hello? Oh, yes. Is this uh, uh, Reverend Bowling? Yes, it is. Yes, how are you doing today? Doing fine. How are you? Yes, sir. You don't know me. Uh, my name is W.P. Richardson. Uh-huh. And uh, you had just, hadn't you just came to town here to be the singer at the this church? Is, this is my first week here. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to have you in the community. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll tell you what I got. I got a, a problem I was hoping you might could help me with. Okay. I, I had a brother. Uh, he was he was killed about four nights ago, uh -huh. and uh, we were trying to get somebody to come sing at his funeral. I'm gonna just tell you straight out, he had been in a lot of trouble around here, uh -huh. and want none of the churches and nothing have nothing to do with it. And uh, I need a singer to come and sing uh -huh. at his funeral, and I'm willing to pay. He had lots of money. He did a lot of underhanded things and everything, but he had plenty of money. Uh -huh. And he uh, uh, he we could pay you. We just want two songs. Okay. And we could pay you like two thousand dollars to come out here and sing them for us. Oh my goodness, W B. Yes. <laughs> well, I tell you the songs he wanted. Do you know any James Brown song? He liked it. I feel good. You know. You know that. I know that song. I couldn't do that very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't holler like James Brown. I sure can. <laughs> what about? And I tell you what. He had a lot of girlfriends, and he wanted to sing. You know that song by Percy Sledge called "When a Man Loves a Woman." You ever heard that? Yeah, I'm familiar we, with that. We were gonna kind of change it to "When a Man Loves Some Women." You know. And, and and get you to sing them too. And really, I got two two thousand dollars in cash here. Would could pay you. When is it going to be? Well, we could have it just about whenever you want to. You know, I mean, I didn't change the date on it two or three days, but we're going to have to hurry because, like I said, he was killed. Uh, what's the day here? Friday, he was killed Tuesday, and you know, he was shot over here, uh, down at the river when he beer joined. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, we were thinking about, well, I mean, even if we had it at night or something like that. Uh, the only thing that would be Saturday night. Is, is there any, uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I would prefer to do some, more religious songs, if that's a possibility. Is, is there any, any you know, religious songs that have to do with, with God that he would be interested in, or that you would be interested in? I know well, you wouldn't be, but... Yeah, uh, well, yeah, you could do like a, let's say, old spiritual, you know, Swing Low Sweet Cherry? Yeah. Yeah, he, like, he would like that, probably. Mm -hmm. His family would and everything, but you, but you don't think you could do them other two songs, too? I, I wouldn't do them, I think, the way that, that y'all would like to hear them done, mm -hmm. for sure, because I, I'm, I'm more of a... Uh, Traditional, uh, traditional white gospel type singer. Yes. You know, kind of, kind of to put it in, in uh, reference. Yes. And uh, the, from those two songs that you're wanting, you, you may want somebody that that could fit well, the bill a little bit better. Well, that's what I'm I saying. Could. I couldn't. I've done to call everybody. I know you ain't turning us down because we're black now. Is Not a bit in the world. You know. No, that doesn't bother me. No, it doesn't. No. Uh -uh. Well, uh, uh, I tell you what, WP, give me. Okay. Uh, what, give me another couple of possibilities of songs. That way I can kind of be working on something. We might do this like Saturday night or, or you know, if, if y'all are pretty flexible on the time. I'm yeah, we could do it. Out. It don't make no difference to me if it's at 12 o'clock at night. Oh, okay. We're going to have plenty to eat, too. And, uh, yeah, you could. we'd like for you to come by the house and spend a couple of hours with the two if you could. Okay, that, that may be pushing a little bit because I've got some commitments Saturday afternoon and I'm leaving Sunday mm -hmm. uh, afternoon right after church. Got to get up early for church. So yes. I might get, you know, at least make the service. And, uh, will the service be here local? Yeah, I was going to see if I could get uh, Brother Reed to preach it, you know. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. And we're trying to get all this, everything wrapped up here today and get this over. i got a lot of kin folks in here from California that yeah. have come over here waiting for this to happen. And they all just sitting ready about to eat me out of the house and home. Uh -huh. you know? I need to get them on the road. Do yeah. you have any other idea of a couple of more songs? Uh, what about, you know, any more platter songs? Like, uh, let me think here. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about more re religious songs. Oh, yes, no. I could do, you know, all of the, any kind of favorite hymn. Mm -hmm. You know that I'd be familiar with some some of the things that are more secular in nature, like you know things by uh, James Brown or things like that. I probably wouldn't do them justice for the style of what y'all were looking for. Yes, sir. you know, just not not too many good white James Browns anywhere. Yes, <laughs> yes, I understand. Well, so, look here. Uh, I tell you what, you be thinking about it, and uh, I'll, I'm gonna try to get a time together here. But you could think late Saturday night be all right. 
I guess we could have some lights took out there to the graveyard, you know. Yeah, or so you know, Saturday evening, say, you know, maybe just after supper sometime. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and I got $2,000 here for you. <laughs> but uh, I'll, if I don't hear back from you, if I'm not here at the church uh, this afternoon, uh, I'll, I'll give you a call back. Will you be at this number? Yes, sure show will. Show sure will. Uh, can you drive it in or do you need 
towed in? Well, I probably can drive it in, you know, as long as I don't have to back up. Uh, yes, sir. Well, we'll be glad to help you with it. Well, yes, sir. It ought not to cost nothing. I think it's still in warranty. Yes, sir. What's the year, Mom? Uh, it's an 81 photo. I bought it from y'all way back there, uh, brand new in the fall, I believe, of 1980. And it really have been a good car up to now, but I'd have thought that transmission would have lasted longer than this here. Uh... A 1981 model? Yes, it sure is. Well, uh, that car's too old. It can't still be in warranty. Well, why not? Uh, the longest warranty we have is five years or 50,000 miles. Yes, sir. Well, it'll fall in that category. Yeah, I know, sir. It can't possibly still be in warranty. The car's over 15 years old. Well, yes, sir, but the warranty say five years or 50,000 miles. It ain't got but 23,000 miles on it. Cause we don't ever go nowhere except just right around here in town, you know. Uh, sir, you don't understand the warranty. It's covered for five years or 50,000 miles, whichever comes first. Whichever comes first? Yes, sir. That's the way the warranty works. Well, then it ought to still be in warranty, oughtn't it? Uh, no, sir, it can't still be in warranty. It's more than five years old. Yes, sir, but it ain't got but 23,000 miles on it. That make it still in warranty because that's less than half of that 50,000 miles they allows on that warranty. And look here, I ain't got the money to get it fixed or nothing. You know, that car cost us everything we had. It was like $4,200 new. And we had saved our money for several years to get it. You know, it ought to still be guaranteed. You act like you're trying to pull something on me to me. Oh, no, sir. We're not trying to pull anything on you. Your car's been out of warranty for at least 10 years. Sure enough. Well, I might just have to get me a lawyer about this here. Uh, sir, your lawyer will tell you the same thing I'm trying to tell you. Your car is not covered by any warranty. Nobody has a warranty that long. Well, yes, they do. I got a watch on my arm right now that have a, a lifetime warranty on it. Yes, sir, but no cars have a lifetime warranty that I know of. Well, you said that nobody have a warranty that long, and I told you my watch do. Uh, sir, I really don't have time to discuss this any longer. I can't seem to make you understand. Your car is not covered by warranty. We'll be glad to fix your transmission, but you'll have to pay for it. Well, I'm still going to talk to my lawyer about this and see what he say. Okay, you do that. And after you talk with him, you can call us back and let us know what he said. Okay, I sure will. Bye. Last time I talked to them, one of them boys over there pulled a 
knife on me and act like he was going to cut me, scared me to death. Well, you ought to just call the police. They can stop it. Well, see, so y'all uh, won't come out here and move the house from me? No, sir. Well, what if I would just go over there while they were gone and move it myself? My son got a log truck out here, and I could just tie some chains around it and, you know, drag it on out away from around here. Sure could. I wouldn't try that. You might get into some trouble. You think so? Sure do. You need to try to handle this through either the police or the sheriff's department. Well, I done talked to them about it several times. They act like they scared of these people they sell. This old man stay over here done been in the penitentiary several times for shooting and hurting people. Last time he was in there, they said he killed somebody while he was off up in there. So the police is ain't too crazy about coming out here and trying to do nothing about this here they own self. Well, we just can't come move someone's house unless the owners ask us to. Well, they rest from my old lady stay over here about a mile or two, and I'm going to just go over there tonight and ask her if, uh, if I pay for it myself, can it be moved? Well, you need to have the owner contact us. We can't move it without her permission. Well, I'm going to go see her this evening if she says it's all right. I was wondering, can y'all move it while all them kids is in there? They probably, you know, uh, probably enjoy getting the ride in it while it's being moved. And that old man <laughs> just kind of tickled me. He sure would be surprised, you know, if he got home and there wasn't nothing out there but a empty lot where that house used to be sitting. No, sir, we can't move a house with people inside. Well... I sure do appreciate your help, and I tell you what, I'm going to call you after I go down there tonight and talk to that old lady and uh, that owns the property. Okay, thanks for calling. All right, I sure appreciate it, honey. Bye-bye. Uh, is this the funeral home? Yes, it is. Uh, yes, sir. I was wanting to know the price of a real good funeral. Well, the prices range from around twelve hundred up to seven thousand. Say they do. Yes, sir. Well, I was been thinking about burying my wife. Yes, sir. Were you interested in one of our pre-planned funerals? You know that that's the best thing you can do. It it sure relieves a lot of stress when the time comes. Uh, no, sir. She already did. Sir. Yes, sir. She already did. She died about three weeks ago three weeks ago, and you haven't had a funeral yet? Uh, no, sir. Well, where is your wife located? Well, I got her right here in the freezer. The, the freezer? Sir, you, you can't keep her in the freezer. Well, why not? When a person dies, if they die at home, you're supposed to contact the authorities, and an inquest should be held by the Justice of the Peace. Sure no. Yes, sir. Did, did she die of natural causes? Uh, yes, I guess you could call it natural causes. Her sister was over here one night, a few week, uh, about three weeks ago, and cooked some poke chops. And uh, we all got real sick, but my old lady passed during the night, and I found her dead the next morning when I woke up. And I didn't know what to do because I didn't want to get her sister in no trouble for feeding her them bad poke chops and killing her, so I just put her here in the freezer till I figured out what to do with her. Well, so you need to call the Justice of the Peace in your area right now. Well. You, you can't keep a body in your home. That's against the law. Say it is. Yes, sir. Well, we ain't got but about $900 together. Could y'all go ahead and bury it, you think, and then we could pay you the rest later on? Well, did she have insurance? Uh, yes, sir. She got some insurance on the old car out here. No, no, sir. I mean some type of life insurance or a burial policy. Not that I knows of. She had some, but we had to cash it in last year to uh, get one of her, her grandsons out to jail. And I don't think she ever did what you call renewal it or nothing. Well, we don't have any type of financing. Uh, we require payment in full before we can complete the service. Yes, sir. Well, could y'all, you think y'all could just store it down there till we get the rest of the money together? Uh, how much rent would y'all charge us to keep her, you know, st storage her down there? If y'all, and if y'all, uh, if y'all was to keep her, I probably wouldn't get in no trouble, would I? No, sir. We're unable to do that for any extended period of time. Extended period of time? Uh, no, sir. We, we just can't do that. Well, I guess I'll just keep it here in the freezer till we get all the money together, and then I'll call you back, and maybe we can have the funeral after that. Sir, you really can't do that. Maybe you should contact another funeral home, uh, maybe one in your area. Well, I done called all of them right around here, and they all told me, told me to call you that you was the best around here. Well, I'm sorry. I don't think we can help you at this time, uh, but you do need to contact the authorities. Well, you done got me scared and worried now. Uh, what am 
am I supposed to do? You know, you tell me that you got to have all the money and I ain't got all the money and that you won't store and I can't store. You said you got funeral starting at, what, $1,200 and I got $900. And I was wondering why can't I just thaw out and I'll bring on down there. Y'all can fix her up and put her in maybe your cheapest casket down there. And y'all could just let her take her in the back of my pickup truck and, and bury her somewhere I was safe. That way, you know, that ought to cut some of the price off, oughtn't it? Sir, you can't conduct a funeral yourself. That's illegal. Uh, what's your name, sir? Well, look here. I got to go. Uh, I'll call you back later on when I get the money together.